Today we're going to talk about game model defending. So as we said before, defensive third, middle third, attacking third. Now when you have a game model for defending, you have to be prepared to have a game model for the defensive third, the middle third, and the attacking third. And what I mean by that is, soccer is a free-flowing game. So in the course of the game, yes, you're going to be attacking and you're going to have the ball up top and you're going to lose it and you're going to need to defend while you're in the attacking third. There's going to be times in the middle third where you have to defend and there's times when the other team has the ball and they have possession and you've been beaten back into your own defensive third. As they rotate the ball, you're going to have to know how to defend deep in a low block. So the other thing is there's all types of ways to you're going to have to decide, are you going to play aggressive zonal defense? Are you going to press into certain areas? Where is your line of confrontation? Where is your line of restraint? How far back do you sit? How far do you push? Are you a pressing team like Jurgen Klopp, like Barcelona? If you lose the ball, do you press right away? So these are things you have to decide. But no matter how you're going to play, you really need to train in all three areas of the field. So. What I'm going to do right now is show you some simple ways to train and this is you're going to have to vary it depending on what formation you play. So we'll start with a 3-5-2. It's kind of the examples I've been using for this lecture series. So what I would do is start with a back line of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Why is there 5? Because your three center backs and in a low block, which we're practicing right here, the two wingers drop back to make a line of five. And then they'll be playing against one, two forwards, two wingers, and two center mids. So you got six playing against five. Now, to make this in the beginning, you can have them just finishing on goal. And then after that, you could put counter goals. Your counter goals can be here. You could have another counter goal here. All this stuff is really up to you. Counter goal, counter goal. You could use a target player, target player. If you wanted to add three counter goals, you could. So this is kind of the first phase, is we just practice in defense, so they're just finishing on goal. And now, obviously, defensive organization, that's what this phase is. As soon as you win the ball, it goes into attacking transition. So it's okay to practice one phase at a time, but eventually it has to be more game realistic where you practice two phases, three phases, and then full out all four phases. So the next step to this is maybe you can add three midfielders, one, two, and three. So a line of five plus three covering center mids. And at that point you add two center backs and you can even add two wingers, uh, two wing backs. So now you have your back four, two center mids, two wingers, and two forwards. Okay, so that's right there is a standard 4 4 2. So it's actually 10 against 7. Add your forward in so he can come back and help and pressure the ball here. Now you've got 10 against 9. And then the last stage is to add all 10. Now, this is just a simple practice that I'm showing you. You can move these, once you add more numbers, you can move these counter goals back, okay? You could have them score on target players. You could actually put two regular full-size goals if you would like with goalkeepers. You could have this team playing out from their low defensive block. You could have them play over an end zone. So if they score by getting into the end zone, the possibilities are really uh, limitless here. If you wanna put the emphasis on defensive organization, they have to score on the counter goals within say four passes. If you want to make the emphasis on not just defensive organization, but really attacking transition, attacking organization, maybe have them score on a goalkeeper and put two goals up here and let them play it out every time they win the ball. And then it comes back to defensive organization and so forth, okay? So that's from a low block. Now we're talking about defending in the middle of the field. So this gets a little bit more complicated, but here's our back line of three. So they're playing a 4-4-2. Now we're going to print, play with pressing zones. So we're going to say maybe the line of confrontation now is half field, right? So this is half field. And this is the line of restraint here. 
So pressing zone one, we always have a pressing zone on the wing back. Center of the field, pressing zone two. Pressing zone three on the other wing back, on the X team. So what happens here is, say the ball is at the center back. He plays this ball to the wing back. This forward, we have two forwards, will cut off the back pass back to the, to the center back. This other forward, you have to decide what, what your game plan is. If you want to leave him high in between the two center backs, if we win the ball, it's an immediate counterattack to goal. If he drops all the way back to help out in the midfield, now it's an option, but now you're not going to have an immediate counterattack. So our winger, while the ball is in flight from the center back to the, to the outside wing back, our winger closes down. So you have two guys closing down here. We take away the outlet pass to the center mid with our center mid. Another center mid, so this is the six and the eight, right? Another center mid takes the forwards, helps screen the forwards. Center back, center back, so our, that's our three in the back. At this point, our other wide winger reads the play because he doesn't want to get beat from a long ball here. Reads the play, maybe drops a little bit, but if he thinks it's going to be a turnover, he is immediately is going to go. He's immediately going to go. Um, and again, it really depends on what your tactics are. I've seen teams like Real Madrid, when they have Ronaldo out wide, if they drop this forward in here, Ronaldo doesn't come back on defense. He stays high. So their actual, so this forward actually comes back. They know if they win the ball, straight ball through, Ronaldo comes in because he stays high and he leaves this space because they figure this ball can't travel from here to here. No reason for Ronaldo to come back. Keep him high as a counterattack threat. So that's defending in a low block, defending in the middle of the field, and the next one, now from this, by the way, you don't have to finish just on goal. You can finish on goal. Again, you could have counter goals in here. You could have three goals. You could have end zones again. You could have target areas to play into. You could have two goals with two goalkeepers. However you want to make this in your defensive game model practice. And I'll show you how to do the last one. Now, all this information is going to go into an ebook, and this is going to be uh, game model defensive coaching, right? So I'm going to show you kind of coaching notes on maybe 10 different sessions on how to practice your defensive game model, low, medium, high, um, in different parts of the field, and also practices that involve obviously defensive organization, all the way attacking transition, attacking organization, and defensive transition. So this is the last phase of the game here. You're looking at the attacking um, area of the field, the attacking third. So our defense is pushed. Our team, because we have the ball right now, um, is all the way half, half field and up. I know this is a defensive game model, but you have to be prepared of how you're going to play defense when your team is set up in attacking organization. So say we have the ball here, we deliver a pass, here it gets intercepted. What do we do when it gets intercepted here, right? Turnover. Well, if you're a pressing team, you're going to press, 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 three men, all different directions. You're gonna have at least one player bounce off here, right? Maybe one player is gonna stay high again. Maybe this forward stays really high. Maybe he splits the center backs here. So if we do win the ball, immediate one pass in and we score. Um, Notice players will just leave their men and just press the ball. We'll have then this player come in. So you have three here and then two and then balanced off here with another three. So if they break the initial three to four players, one long ball over the top doesn't hurt because we have three here. So how do you make this a defensive training session? Simple. Again, you could put two big goals. You could put end line here. You score by getting it over the end line. The coach can just randomly throw a ball out and say, okay, X team, your ball, just throw it out. And then the O's, the, the attacking team has to go and play defense, press, press, press. Or maybe your game plan is, if you're not a pressing team is, maybe, the, maybe our whole team is over to one side of the field a little bit. Coach throws a ball out here. There's no pressure on the ball. This guy has the ball, there's no pressure. It's a counterattack going the other way. One player, slow the ball down as everybody else comes back, comes back. 
gets defensive shape. Maybe half field is where we hold the line. And then our line of restraint is here. So pressure's relieved, they can go forward. There's no one to stop them. He comes in, runs to slow it down as the whole team recovers. That's a completely different game model strategy than lose the ball and everybody press. Completely different. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but what I am saying is you have to train your defensive game model one, two, three different areas of the field. Look for my ebook on Amazon.com on game model defending and training methods. And also check out all my ebooks on Amazon.com as well as my blog at CoachDBernardo.com and my cognitive soccer diploma at SoccerSmartTraining.com.